Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the earlier videos on the BJT, we have discussed the common emitter, common collector and the common base amplifiers. And we had seen that using the small signal analysis, how we can find the different amplifier parameters like the voltage gain, the input and the output impedance. So after this discussion, we are in a position to discuss the multi-stage amplifiers. But before we go through that, let us discuss this collector feedback configuration. So in the earlier video, we have already seen the DC analysis of this collector feedback configuration. But in this video, let us see how to do the AC analysis or the small signal analysis of this collector feedback configuration. Now for the AC analysis perspective, this circuit is still common emitter amplifier. Because here if you observe, the input is applied between the base and the emitter terminal while the output is measured between the collector and the emitter terminal. That means here, this emitter terminal is common between the input and the output side. So let's do the small signal analysis of this configuration and let us find the different amplifier parameters like the voltage gain, the input and the output impedance. So for the small signal analysis, we will follow the same steps. That means we will consider all the DC voltage sources in the circuit as zero while we will replace the coupling capacitors by the short circuit. And then after, we will replace the BJT by the small signal model. So if you see over here, the input signal is applied between the base and the emitter, while this collector register RC is connected between the collector and the emitter terminal. That means in the AC equivalent circuit, it can be shown like this. Apart from that, here this base register RB is connected between the collector and the base terminal. That means in the equivalent circuit, it can be shown like this. So this is the AC equivalent circuit of this collector feedback configuration. So if you see over here, this base resistor RB is connected between the base and the collector terminal. Or in other words, we can say that it is connected between the input and the output side. So conventionally, if we do the small signal analysis, then it will be very complicated, but it can be simplified using the Miller's theorem. So according to the Miller's theorem, if any impedance is connected between the two nodes, then it can be converted into the two grounded impedances and at the same time ensuring that the voltage and the current in the circuit remains unchanged. So let's say here the voltage at this node 1 is equal to V1 while the voltage at this node 2 is equal to V2. And let's say this voltage V2 is equal to K times V1. So according to this Miller's theorem, this Z1 can be given as ZF divided by 1 minus K. Similarly, this impedance Z2 can be given as K divided by K minus 1 times ZF. And it can be easily proved also. So let's say the current which is going away from this node 1 is equal to I1. So this current I1 can be given as voltage V1 minus V2 divided by Zf, right? That means I1 is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by Zf. And after the transformation, the current which is going away from this node 1 should remain the same. That means this current should be equal to I1. So in this case, it will be equal to voltage V1 divided by Z1. So from this, we can say that voltage V1 minus K times V1 divided by Zf is equal to V1 divided by Z1. Or we can say that this impedance Z1 is equal to Zf divided by 1 minus K. Similarly, for this node 2, this current I1 is the incoming current. That means current I1 is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by Zf. And the same current should also go into this node 2. That means here, this current should be equal to I1. So from this we can say that it should be equal to 0 minus V2 divided by Z2, right? That means V1 minus K times V1 divided by Zf is equal to minus K times V1 divided by Z2. 
or we can say that this z2 is equal to k divided by k minus 1 times zf. So in this way, using this Miller's theorem, we can convert the any impedance between the two node into the two grounded impedances. So similarly, using this Miller's theorem, we can also represent this resistor RB into the two grounded impedances R1 and the R2. So here, this resistor R1 will be equal to RB divided by 1 minus AV, while this resistor R2 will be equal to AV divided by AV minus 1 times RB. So here, this AV is equal to voltage gain, that is V out divided by V in. Because if you see over here, the voltage over here is equal to V out, while the voltage at this end is equal to input voltage. Now typically, as the voltage gain is much greater than 1, so this resistor R2 can be approximately given as Rb. So in this way, using this Miller's theorem, now it is easy to find the amplifier parameters like the voltage gain, the input impedance and the output impedance. And first of all, now let us find out the voltage gain. So here, this voltage is equal to output voltage. So here, this output voltage can be given as minus IC times RC parallel R2 or we can say that approximately equal to minus IC times RC parallel RB. Now here, this IC is equal to minus GM times V pi. And if you see over here, this V pi is equal to input voltage. That means output voltage V out is equal to minus GM times V in times RC parallel RB. Or we can say that this voltage gain V out divided by V in, that is AV is equal to minus GM times RC parallel RB. Now typically, this base resistor RB is much greater than RC. So in this condition, when the base resistor RB is much greater than RC, in that condition, this voltage gain is approximately equal to minus GM times RC. So similar to the other common emitter configurations, this configuration also provides the high voltage gain. So similarly, now let us find out the output impedance. So the output impedance is the Thevenin's equivalent impedance which is seen from the output side. And while calculating this impedance, we will consider all the independent sources in the circuit as zero. That means this input voltage V in will be also considered as the short circuit. And once it will get short circuited, then these two resistors R1 and R pi will also get short circuited. And the voltage V pi will also become zero. So once the voltage V pi will become zero, then this current source will also become open circuited. And in that condition, if you see the output impedance, then it is the parallel combination of RC and the R2. Or effectively we can say that it is equal to the parallel combination of RC and the RB. So this will be the output impedance of this character feedback configuration. So similarly, now let us find out the input impedance. So the input impedance is the equivalent impedance which is seen from the input side. And in this case, if you see, it is the parallel combination of this R1 and the R pi, where R1 is equal to Rb divided by 1 minus Av. So here, the value of R1 will depend on the value of Rb as well as the voltage gain. But in any case, this input impedance will be always less than the R pi. That means in this configuration, the input impedance is in the moderate range. Alright, so to get some idea about this configuration, let us take one example. So in this example, we have been asked to find the voltage gain of this amplifier circuit. And here, we have been given that the voltage Vb is equal to 0 0.7 volt, while the value of beta is equal to 60. So here, to find the voltage gain, First of all, we need to know the value of the transconductance at the operating point. And for that, we need to find the value of this collector current. So to find this collector current, 
first of all let us do the dc analysis so here the collector current ic can be found using these expressions so here the base current ib can be given as voltage vcc minus vb divided by rb plus beta plus 1 times rc while the collector current ic is equal to beta times ib so first of all let us find the base current so here this base current ib is equal to 12 volt minus 0.7 volt divided by 53 kilo ohm plus beta plus 1 that is equal to 61 times 1 kilo ohm that means the value of this base current ib is equal to 99.12 microampere and the collector current ic is equal to beta times ib that means here this collector current ic is equal to 60 times 99.12 microampere that is equal to 5.94 milliampere so this will be the value of the collector current and the transconductance gm can be given as ic divided by vt that is equal to 5.94 milliampere divided by 26 millivolt that is equal to 0.228 siemens all right so once we got the value of this transconductance then let us do the small signal analysis and let us find the voltage gain and for that if we see the small signal equivalent circuit then it will look like this so here this rs is the series resistance that is 5.3 kilo ohm while the rc is equal to 1 kilo ohm and here this r2 is approximately equal to rb similarly the r1 is equal to rb divided by 1 minus avb and here this avb is the ratio of the output voltage to the voltage at the base terminal that means avb is equal to v out divided by vb so here because of this series resistor rs the input voltage and this voltage vb are not equal that means to find the overall voltage gain v out divided by v in we also need to find the ratio of vb and the v in so the overall voltage gain v out divided by v in will be equal to this v out divided by vb times voltage vb divided by v in so first of all let us find the value of voltage v out divided by vb so as we have discussed earlier this voltage avb or the v out divided by vb can be given as minus gm times rc parallel r2 or we can say that it is equal to minus gm times rc parallel rb that is equal to minus 0.228 times 1 kilo ohm in parallel with 53 kilo ohm and if we calculate the value then this avb will come out as minus 224 so now to find the overall voltage gain let us find the ratio of the vb and the input voltage and to find that we can represent the entire circuit which is on the right hand side of this base terminal by the equivalent impedance and it is equal to the input impedance which is seen from the base terminal so as we have just seen this input impedance z in can be given as r1 parallel r pi so here r1 is equal to rb divided by 1 minus avb while this r pi is equal to beta divided by gm so in this case this r1 is equal to 53 kilo ohm divided by 1 minus minus 2 to 4 that is equal to 235.5 ohm while the value of r pi will be equal to 60 divided by 0.228 that is equal to 263.1 ohm so this input impedance is equal to 235.5 ohm in parallel with 263.1 ohm that is equal to 124.3 ohm so this will be the value of the input impedance so now we can represent the entire circuit which is on the right hand side of this base terminal by this input impedance and now this voltage vb can be given as vb is equal to 
z in divided by z in plus r s times v in or we can say that voltage v b divided by v in is equal to z in divided by z in plus r s that is equal to 124.3 ohm divided by 124.3 plus 5300 that means the overall voltage gain v out divided by v in is equal to voltage v out divided by v b times v b divided by v in that is equal to minus 224 times 124.3 ohm divided by 124.3 ohm plus 5300 ohm and if we simplify it then the overall voltage gain will be equal to minus 5.13 so this will be the overall voltage gain of the given circuit so if you see over here the voltage avb is large that is equal to minus 224 but because of this large series resistor the overall voltage gain reduces but if the input impedance of the amplifier is high then it would not have affected the overall voltage gain so in such case to achieve the desired voltage gain or for the impedance matching the multiple amplifier stages can be cascaded so in the upcoming videos we will learn more about the multi stage amplifiers but i hope in this video you understood about this collector feedback configuration so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos